What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to build a dollar cost averaging calculator in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to build a dollar cost averaging calculator in Python today. Now, for those of you who don't know what dollar cost averaging is, it's a very basic strategy where we invest the same amount of money into the same asset over a period of time in a certain interval. For example, I could say $500 every three months into Apple stock. That would be dollar cost averaging because I'm not looking at any indicators, any signals, any news, any price changes. I do predictably the same thing every three months, which is invest $500 into Apple stock. Now, for the sake of simplicity, we're going to assume that this is possible to invest the exact same amount because we're going to assume that we can buy half a stock or 0.678 stocks, whatever. Um, but we're going to simulate it like this. So we're going to build a back testing tool. We're going to use past data to see how much money we would have made if we applied dollar cost averaging um, over a certain time period for a certain asset with a certain price and interval. Now, I need to mention at this point that none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial professional. I'm just showing you how to code a simple back testing tool. Uh, so you can use it or not, but I'm not a financial professional. Don't consider my opinion here in any way relevant when it comes to finance. I'm just giving you uh, a tutorial on how to code this. Um, all right, so we're going to start by opening up the command line and installing the following three packages, pandas to work with data frames, matplotlib for the visualization and y finance to get the data from the yahoo finance api once you have them installed you can import them by saying import pandas spd import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and import y finance as yf all right and now what we're going to do is we're going to define the parameters for our back testing so for example ticker what asset do i want to invest in now, if you want to go with Apple stock, you would type AAPL. If you want to go with Tesla, TSLA. If you want to go with NVIDIA, NVDA. Um, I'm going to go here with an ETF. I want to go with an S&P 500 ETF from iShares. So, so I'm going to type IVV. This is a ticker symbol of the iShares uh, ETF for the S&P 500. And then I'm going to provide a time frame. So start date is going to be 20... Uh, 17, for example, 1st of January, and the end date is going to be equal to 2024, 1st of January. And the interval I want to invest in is every three months, I want to invest an amount of $500. Now you can change this however you like, these are just the parameters that are going to be used. This is what we want to simulate investing into the S&P 500 ETF in this time frame every three months, $500. Um, so how do we simulate that? First of all, we get the data, we can say data equals y finance dot download ticker and then start equals start date and equals end date. And then we have all the data so I can print this. And you can see we have all the data for this time frame. Now what we want to do is we want to resample this data to only have the individual instances where we buy the actual asset. So first of all, I'm going to say data equals data drop an A. And then I'm going to say data equals, or actually let's say resampled data equals data dot resample. And I'm going to pass here as an argument, the interval, which 3M means three months. And um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say first, so I'm going to get the first entry here. And the result of that is, as you can see, a data point every three months. So I only have one row for every three months. And this is going to be the price I'm going to buy at. So now we have that we can start then before we get into our investment loop, we're going to say total investment is going to start with zero, we don't have anything invested yet total shares is also going to be zero, we don't have anything that we own yet. And then I'm going to have a dollar cost averaging lock, which is going to be an empty list. And I'm going to say here, for date and row in resampled data, iterose. So iterate over the rows for date and row here, 
what I want to do is I want to get the price at which I'm going to buy. So row adjusted close. And again, for the sake of simplicity, we're going to assume that I can buy half a stock or 1.67 stocks and so on. Uh, so I don't have to buy exactly one stock because in this case, it would be hard to invest exactly $500. So I'm going to get the price and I'm going to say shares bought is going to be equal to amount divided by price. So how many shares can I buy for um, for the amount that I'm investing in at the price. And then I say total shares is plus equals. Actually, I can do that in one line. So let's do that like this shares. Um, actually, amount divided by price. And the total investment is just plus equals amount. Um, all right, and then we're going to have all of this in a dictionary, we're going to add it to the lock, and then we're going to turn the lock into a data frame. So I'm going to say here DCA uh, lock append, and we're going to have a dictionary where we say date is date, price is price, then um, total shares is total shares total investment is total investment. And then the portfolio value is going to be equal to total shares times current price. So times the price at this particular date. And uh, that is going to give us the current portfolio value at each point in time. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to turn uh, take all of this and turn it into a data frame. So DCA DF is going to be equal to PD data frame based on the DCA lock. Uh, we can actually print that now. And we will already see some interesting results. So you can see basically the portfolio value in here is um, what you see on the right side. And this here is what we invested. So if you see a difference between these two values, it's either a gain or a loss. In this case, now, if we go to the end, this is how much money I've put in. So one uh, 14,500. And the portfolio value is right now 20,462. So I made a bunch of money by just doing dollar cost averaging uh, on the S&P 500. But we don't want to look at the data frame, we want to actually visualize all of this and we want to see actual numbers. So what I'm going to say is final portfolio value is obviously equal to total shares uh, times uh, stock data. Stock data. Oh, actually, I call this data. Uh, data I lock negative one. So we get the last entry of the stock data that we loaded from the Yahoo Finance API, we multiply that cl uh, closing price. Uh, we, we take that closing price, we multiply it with the number of shares that we have, and that is our uh, value and the profit. So the total profit is going to be whatever that value is minus the amount of um, money we invested. So the total investment. And now to visualize all of that, or first of all, let's print it. So the final portfolio value and the total profit, maybe we should add some stuff here like this total profit, final value. But the interesting part is going to be the visualization. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say PLT figure, figure size is going to be 10 six. And then we're going to say PLT plot and we want to plot now one line that shows us how much money we invested, which is going to be a straight line because we invest the same amount of money. Um, every three months, but then we're going to have a second line that is going to show us the value of the portfolio over time. So we're going to say here that this is going to be DCA DF um, date, and then DCA DF uh, portfolio value, the label for the legend is going to be portfolio value then I'm going to copy this and I'm going to change this to 
total investment, total investment, or actually let's call this invested amount here in the plot. PLTX label is gonna be uh, date and PLTY label is gonna be value in dollars. And then the title of this will be dollar cost averaging on whatever we have here, which is our ticker or let's say four ticker. Um, and then we're going to say PLT legend, PLT grid, and PLT show. This is going to give us the result visually and we're going to see that in this case now investing into the S&P 500 over this time period every three months $500 would have led to a significant uh, profit. You can also see here in the command line it says the profit is 8600 um, which is quite a bit. You can now go ahead and change the values also. You can say, okay, what if I invest aggressively into Apple stock, for example, let's say every month I invest a thousand bucks. What would happen then? In this case, uh, yeah, in this case, you would have made a lot of money, as you can see. Uh, but of course, this is to be taken with a grain of salt. It's not always going to be the case. Probably if I try, I can find an example here where this is not going to be the case. Um, especially if you invest into individual stocks. But as I said, I'm not a financial professional. I'm not going to comment here too much on strategies, but this is how you can back test it. You can see what happens when you provide a certain ticker symbol, uh, a certain time period, a certain interval, a certain amount that you want to invest on a regular basis. And you can see in the past, how well would this have worked? And then you can make your own conclusions on what you want to do in the future. But this is how you can build a dollar cost averaging back testing tool in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.